So this is a video of how to deal with kinetic friction in determining the resulting motion of a block down a ramp when kinetic friction is acting. I want to add that the last video that I showed you that involved static friction described what it would take to get the block to move. This video presumes that the block is already moving in order for there to be kinetic friction. So the, the forces that are acting in this block are identical to those of static friction with the exception that in the x direction, instead of having static friction acting, you now have kinetic friction. So you're going to have Fgx, just like you do in any block problem, minus Fk. That's going to be equal to the net force in the, F, in the x direction. That's also going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the block in the x direction. In the y direction, which is, remember, perpendicular to the ramp, x is down the ramp. In the y direction, in the positive direction, we have fn. In the negative direction, we have fgy. So in the y direction, I'll say we have fn minus fgy. That's equal to the net force in the y direction. And that has to be equal to 0, because the block, in, in this case, is not accelerating into the into the ramp or out of the ramp. Its acceleration in the y direction has to be zero. What that means, therefore, is that Fn equals Fgy. And in the previous video, we determined that Fgy is equal to Fg times the cosine of theta, which is equal to mg cosine theta. Okay, so that's for the y direction. Now we're going to use that in the x direction in just a minute. Going back to the x direction for the acceleration, here's what we have. We have that fgx minus fk equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. fgx, if you recall, is equal to mg, or fg, times the sine of the angle theta. I'll just put mg in there, make, make that jump from fg to mg. fk, when you have rear friction, it's always equal to the coefficient of friction, whether it's kinetic or static, times the normal force. That's equal to max. Remember, we want to find the acceleration. That's what we're looking for. All right. Now I can use this result for FGY, or I'm sorry, for FN, which is also FGY, and plug it in to this equation right here. So what I'm going to get is mg sine theta minus mu k times mg cosine theta equals m a x. Now since all I want to do is solve for a x, I can divide everything by m. And so all the m's are going to go away. 